You're listening to the Lutheran Hour, and this is Action in Ministry, a call to action in response to all that God has done for us in Jesus Christ. And right now we want to continue talking about Joseph. It's the remarkable story of an ordinary man facing an extraordinary situation. Yeah, in the grace of God. And Mark, you know, Joseph struggled too, in in spite of all the good things that were happening around him. We can relate to his fear, his uncertainty, when we consider also in our own lives the lack of peace in our world or what's happening in our lives as well. And we have a video resource for you titled Joseph Carpenter of Steel that tells us more about this part of the Christmas story. And joining us to talk about that is Dr. Jeff Oshwald, who is the chairman of the Exegetical Theology Department at Concordia Seminary in St. Louis. He's going to help us dig more into the life of Joseph and help us understand how his story matters to us. Dr. Oshwald, thanks for joining us today. Very happy to be here. Now, Jeff, the Bible says that Joseph, you know, in this Christmas story, the earthly foster father of Jesus, he was a carpenter by trade. Now, what does that tell us about him, and and how would it compare to what we expect a carpenter to be today? Yeah, the Bible uses a Greek word, tectone, to describe Joseph, which could also refer just more generally to a builder. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, many of the ancient sources do associate this trade uh, specifically with someone who works with wood rather than other materials like bronze, for instance, but it can also refer to a mason or stone worker as well. So ancient carpenters did build houses, but they also made farm implements like plows and yokes, really anything made from wood. And in the Bible study, Dr. Meyer fills in this background in Mm -hmm. a very helpful way. Okay. And besides his occupation, what else do we know about his character? Joseph is not actually described as a carpenter until much later in the Uh, story. And then it's really more a reference to Jesus' character. He's just the son of a carpenter Mm -hmm. than it is to Joseph himself. What's more important for us to keep in mind, especially as we uh, hear and meditate about the Christmas story, is that Joseph is addressed as a son of David. Mm -hmm. As the Christmas story begins... We see a king ruling over God's people who is by no means a son of David in any sense. That's King Herod. And then next to him, we see this humble, noble, faithful, righteous man, Joseph, a true son of David. Wow. So for our story and for the Bible story, Joseph is that concrete connection between the child who's about to be born and the whole history of covenant and promise that connects God to his people. Yeah, you know, God does things a whole different way than we do. We would have thought the king, the powerful one, Herod, was the one that God would have chosen. We, and, and again, we have the, it's totally upside down. And here in this faithful servant who's from humble circumstances comes the king of kings. Mm-hmm. Wow. From the time Joseph was engaged to Mary, though, he encountered a number of challenges Uh, One of his biggest challenges, though, was that Mary became pregnant before they were married. Uh, Tell us the ramifications uh, of this at that time and how Joseph responded. So engagement and marriage in those days was not very much like it is today in our world at all. (laughs) Not at all. (laughs) The unfaithfulness on the part of Mary left Joseph with really only one legal option. Okay. She had to be divorced. Now, remember that Joseph may not have even known Mary very well at this point, especially if the marriage was an arranged one. So what reason would he have had to trust her, especially with such an incredible story? Now, if Joseph had gone ahead and married her, it would likely have brought lasting shame to everyone involved, both the families and Mary and Joseph themselves. And most people would have regarded Joseph's marrying her probably as his admission that he was, in fact, the father of this child to be born out of wedlock. Now, Matthew, in his gospel, tells us that Joseph was a righteous man. That is, he wanted to make things right. And pretending that nothing wrong had happened would not have made things right. Right. So even then, though, he could still show compassion to this woman. So a private severing of that legal bond of engagement would have been the best choice given who Joseph was and what he knew at that time. But an angel appears to Joseph in a dream and assures him that Mary has not been unfaithful. This child has been conceived by the Holy Spirit, and uh, it's okay for Joseph to go ahead with the marriage. Did things go smoothly after that? Almost certainly not. (laughs) (laughs) Do things ever go smoothly after a child is born? Yeah. Yeah. But... 
The evangelists don't really focus on that, of course. Yeah. Uh, but keep in mind yeah. that those revelations to Mary and Joseph were very private matters, and nothing would have changed for the townspeople of Nazareth. For them, it would still have been just the word of a simple carpenter against the much easier to believe rumors mm -hmm. that were mm -hmm. flying around. And Mary and Joseph valued the honor of this child more than their own. So they don't try to hide Mary's pregnancy. They don't try to cover it up or pretend that the child really is Joseph's. In fact, they don't consummate their own relationship as husband and wife until after this child is born. And of course, I don't think any of us can imagine what it would be like to raise a sinless child, <laughs> to have a perfect son in a house full of sinful parents, sure. sinful brothers, and sinful sisters. And then remember that immediate flight mm -hmm. to Egypt just to keep this child alive. How did they live on that journey? Yeah. And how did Joseph reestablish himself as a carpenter when he returns to Nazareth after abandoning his customers for so long? Mm. Now, it, it certainly couldn't have been easy for this young family, and yet what peace and joy they must have known watching this child grow to be a man. You know, it is amazing because you can see in the story that it, it's all about Jesus, and they're willing to risk everything to be faithful to, to this Christ child. And like you just said, uh, Joseph had to deal with all of those things, but they were dealing with it in the certainty that this child was unique, this child was special. And like you are going to share with us too, that they got a chance to glimpse it up front and close and personal. Um, so what do we really take then from this Joseph story? You know, he handled these struggles so amazingly. So what does that mean for those of us following Christ and, and trusting in Christ today? In his commentary on Matthew, uh, New Testament scholar Craig Keener writes, Matthew invites his audience to learn from Joseph's character about fidelity, discipline, and preferring God's honor above one's own. And I think that summarizes Joseph very well. But we do need to add and to reinforce uh, the point that you just mentioned, that God brought Joseph into this amazing story of his plan of salvation for the whole world. The things that Joseph must have seen, it's hard to imagine. Right. But you and I have been brought into that same story of God's salvation, and we too are privileged to witness the wonders of God's power of salvation at work. And finally, we can't emphasize enough that we, like Joseph, need to remember that this is Jesus' story. Mm -hmm. And that's the story we want the whole world to hear. Absolutely. It's a fascinating subject, and this video resource, Joseph Carpenter of Steel, is hosted by Pastor Seltz, and it has a wealth of insight, features commentary also by one of the great Bible scholars and historians of our day, Dr. Mm -hmm. Paul Meyer. And you'll hear some of what we've been discussing, but so much more. And Mark, I enjoyed being a part of this wonderful resource, as you just said, and what a great discussion we've had today with you, Dr. Oswald. You know, God did give Joseph a big task to be the earthly father of our Savior, um, but this story, like you said, it's, a, it's about Jesus Christ and what hope we have in Him, how that can literally bring hope and joy in the middle of whatever circumstance and equip us to take up any challenge because we are His people. So that brings us real peace, Christmas peace as well. Mm -hmm. Dr. Oswald, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. And that's our Action and Ministry segment today, to bless, to empower, and to strengthen your life in Christ for others.